Yes, my name is Ben Chen. Welcome back to another Star Mage tutorial. In the last episode, you would have remembered that we set up our area trigger um, in order to detect our ships approaching, and I discussed how it wasn't all that robust, and in fact, we needed some other way of being able to deal with it. Well, a new uh, release has just come out with a whole heap of logic updates. You can check out all those different videos as well. I'll have a whole new series covering all the cool things that you're able to do with that and the ways that you can integrate it into your builds. Um, but for now, we're going to jump into this one because an update's come out that also makes a lot of the robustness uh, that we didn't have in this uh, a lot more existent. Um, so, we thought start here and we'll pull out the stuff which actually has become redundant uh, which essentially is this whole section on the top so you can see I'm about to go and delete them all there and I'll fly around to the side and all our area trigger blocks we don't need so rapid fire clicking pew 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 pew, pew, pew to get rid of all of them they were great but they just weren't as uh, how you say um, faultless or f floor proof or whatever you want to say they they, they weren't as uh, robust as what we actually want to do and this system brand new system a lot easier to do now how easy it is well in reality it's pretty much just a single block so we'll chuck our block up there so just as a quick reminder as to the different things that we have here, we have um, the block underneath just here on our rail, which pulses and goes into here. And that's what basically lets us know whether or not the whole dock is occupied. You'll see that we've got the triggers over here, which controls the rails. And then we've got the... Um, the different triggers on this side. So we can get rid of this uh, delay as well. You can also see that our uh, button here, which I don't know why there's a, an activation module here. I'm sure I had a reason. <laughs> but the button here goes over here and also triggers the, the rail swap. So when this flip-flop flops, it's going to trigger everything to leave. Now, the other thing is we do have a uh, button there, which goes into a button underneath, and that goes into this top flip-flop. And this is um, what controls our actual force field. So those are the elements that we're working with. And now we've got this brand new element here, which is our activation module. Uh, we can also, in fact, we'll make it a button. Where are my buttons? There we go. So it's a button now. And what we want to do is we want to put it on this second block here. So we're hitting C on that pickup rail. We're going to fly over and we're going to hit V on that. And it's going to go, you can't do that when in reality, reality you can. So uh, that button will pulse. Stop it. Maybe it only works with activation modules. I haven't actually tried this out, so let's try it out. But one of them will pulse. Not sure which one. We'll figure it out. Together. For science. Push the button. We're reversing. And... There. So there we go. We can see both actually triggered. And in fact, our blue one is, is blue again. Um, we won't be able to land because there's nothing to land, but that's okay because that lets us actually do all the setting up that we need to set it up. So if we jump back into here, you can see our blocks changed there. When in reality, we actually don't want this, this flip-flop connected to this activation module. So this activation module controls whether or not people can see this pickup point. And what we want is we do want that visible. And we want to actually take out this button as well. And you'll be like, oh, no, why? why would you take out the button? Because the button denotes whether or not this is available or not. And what we want to do is add in... Where are we? Button. 
There we go. We want to add in a, uh, a button just to toggle it there. You can see that gives us the option. Um, but we're going to have two different ways of going into this. Um, oh, no, rather, we're going to just have a one, which is our button here. Um, so the button here is what detects. We're going to send it into the flip flop. And then from the flip flop, we're going to be able to go into the activation module or not. So at the moment, uh, everything's green. It means that everything's available. And when people dock, it'll go like that and it'll go, no, it's red. It's unavailable now. And that's because someone's docked onto it. And that's just to ensure that no one else goes to dock when you've docked. And you won't be able to undock or enter until they uh, exit again, which is when they trigger it when they're leaving just before the shutout rail. So that connection now controls our entire ability to as to whether or not our hangar is uh, occupied or not. So now that we've done that, we just need to add in the other condition new, which is the button triggering that. which is what we want. And again, when it triggers this flip-flop, that's when it will close the force field. Now, the other thing that's worth doing is we're going to add in a final AND gate, and that's for when we're occupied. So we have a red light now, and everything's exited. We're going to take the knot, put it in... We can just float it in an AND gate up there. And we're going to put our button into that. Then we're going to take the AND gate and send it into our flip-flop. That'll mean that when we're in this state and our button gets triggered, so when we're exiting and we hit this point here, that it will also trigger everything to toggle. But we want, don't want it triggering straight away. So we might chuck just a short delay on it just to give us enough time to leave because otherwise it'll toggle us before we hit the shootout rail and then we have no chance of, of coming back so we'll toggle that now and you'll see that's reset and we'll toggle that now and that'll make it green and now we're really reset so we can jump out and jump into our ship and we'll jump into here and you'll see that when I jump in there I can now see the pickup area I fly towards the pickup area, I dock on it, force field opens, oh, and it's decided, no, it wants to get rid of me. And that's just because that we are, uh, the funny thing with the flip-flops is they can get a little confused with buttons, so what we want to do is give us a little bit of time here when this changes so that this can go off. And that's just as simple as adding in a delay. We'll chuck two in just to be sure, and then into that and. So it's just future-proofing, because again, with lag or something, you don't want something like that happening. That'll be really awkward. So you can see now everything's on, we'll fly in. Oh, where am I? Flying the other way. Ah, it's because we haven't toggled the it hasn't toggled itself, uh, which is as simple as us pushing that there. Now we've got it. So we'll fly over, like so. You can see lights up, fly forward, like so. It'll push the button, and there. You can see red light means it's occupied, everything's closed. And now, in order for us to leave, we can push the button, or we've also got the wireless controller in our ship, because we've set it up for this one. But we'll push the button, we'll jump into it, and you can see it's ejecting us out. Off we go. And it will reset and say, now it's available. Which is good. Everything that we want it to do. So flying into it again. And you can see, does the same thing. So that's a basic hangar setup, and you can see if I jump out of the, the gravity of it. Force field closes when it's normal, and if I had another ship, 
out here, like the one I just made, and chuck a pickup rail on it. And go with our, um, our radial menu to the weapons. You can see I can't see that pickup point at all. And that's because it's not available to me because this hanger is closed. So that's that basic hanger adjustment. I will be doing another video in the future. Whoa, bit of lag there. <laughs> I'll be doing another video in the future to talk about uh, how to make this a bit more compact, uh, how to basically build this with the systems that we've got again. Basically going over, over this so it's not spread across three different videos. But for those that actually followed this video the last time and wanted to adapt it for this now more robust way of doing things, that's how you do it. Nice and simple. But until next time, my name is Bench and thanks for watching.